Ladies and frogs, it's time for Writer's Workshop. I have found a cozy place to work. I've got some little lights or a lamp on. I'm listening to some quiet music. And this week, we're going to be writing uh, some nonfiction books. I chose to write a book about pigs. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to have to pick a farm animal, because that's what we're going to be talking about. Pick a farm animal that you like. If you have a book at home that is nonfiction, remember, nonfiction means it's real. So the pigs won't be wearing clothes or they won't be talking. So it's a real book with some facts. Remember, it probably has a table of contents. And even if it doesn't, remember, we're looking for facts. So if you have a nonfiction book at home, use that. Otherwise, in the information I sent your mommy and daddy, I sent some videos that you can watch. So pick an animal that you want, and then we're going to do some writing after you read the book. I listened to the pig book, so I want to show you what I'm going to do. So my photographer, Ashley, is going to zoom around, and we're going to look at my pig book. So, first of all, I need to have my title. I haven't done my illustration yet, so I'm going to work on that later. I also used my dedication page. Now, hopefully, you're going to be getting some writing paper in the mail, and then it will look something similar to this. Not exact, but similar. Or you can use a notebook or any paper that you have at home. Now, when we start our writing, we always want to talk about an introduction. And our introduction is going to tell the people that are reading our book later what our book is about. My book is about pigs, so my introduction is, what is a pig? Notice I have a capital, I've got spaces, and I'm asking a question, so I wanted to make sure I had a question mark. And then I did a detailed picture with a pig. Now, pigs can be tricky, so I want you to think about the shapes circles and circles, triangle-ish, circle. So think about breaking it down that way. If you want, you can use your pencil to do your sketch first, and then that way if you make mistakes, you can erase. After that, you can color it in if you want. So work on an introduction. Also notice how my picture is not covering up my words. It makes it tricky to read my words if the picture covers it up. Let me show you my next page. My next page, when I listened to the pig book, it talked about where pigs live. So I wrote, pigs live in pig pens. That was my first sentence. I have a capital to start. I put some spaces here, and then I have a period. Moms and dads, if you notice, not all my words are spelled the grown-up way because kindergartners aren't grown-ups. Live, this is what it sounds like. Live. I don't hear that silent E at the end. If you know that there's a silent E, you can put it there. But if you don't hear it, don't worry about it. My next sentence is, pig pens can be inside the barn or outside. Now, if you're a Tweety writer, you need to write one sentence for sure. If you want to challenge your brain, try to write two. If you're a frog writer, you definitely need to be writing at least two sentences. Try your best. Now, this is one page I did one day, on Monday. And then on Tuesday, I did this page. Notice my detailed picture. I took my time and I did my best. This page could be for Wednesday. Now this page says, pigs have big ears and most have curly tails. If I was a frog writer or a Tweety writer that wanted to challenge their brain, I would keep going and maybe talk about the hooves or something else that I learned from the book. Notice my illustration. I also took this time to put some labels. Remember when we did labels? So you could also label your picture. Now, if you're writing a book about cows or goats, your picture would have that and you could do some labeling also. Then the next day, I worked on this page. Now, when I listened to the book, it told me that pigs like to swim. That was a fact I didn't even know. But it also told me that pigs like mud. And I couldn't decide, should I have that be two different pages or should I put them on one? So I decided to draw a line here and I'm going to have my pigs swimming on this side and my pigs in the mud on this side. And then I want to make sure my sentences say that. So my first sentence said, pigs are good swimmers. Remember, capital, spaces, period, and a vowel in every word. Now, 
They like to be clean. I learned that in my book that I listened to. I thought pigs like to be dirty, but it said they like to be clean. But it also said they like to wallow in the mud. Wallow was a word I had that I just learned. So my sentence isn't done. So Tweety writers, if you're challenging your brain, go for more. Frog writers, definitely. They like to be clean and... And that's one of my snap words, so I know how to write it. Remember, when you're making the D, start with a magic C. And mm, wallow. W -w I think it's a W word. Wa -a -a oh, oh, I didn't know it would hurt so. O W. And wallow, space, in. Ooh, another snap word. The. Mm, uh, uh, uh. Ooh, that's tricky. I have to think of a vowel. Could be a U, could be an A. I'm going to go with the U. Mud. Period. And then my sentences match my illustrations. Now, I'm feeling like I've got a lot of things. I worked on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Now, I'm going to pretend it's Friday. This is going to be my conclusion. I need to wrap it up, and I need to let them know that my story is done. I found out that I really like pigs, so I'm going to write I, and remember when the I is by itself, it's always, always, every single time, a capital. I like pigs. Pig is a down low letter. Remember when we did the letter aerobics? And G is a down low letter. I like pigs. Now I wonder, the people that are reading my book, I wonder if they like pigs. So I'm going to ask a question. And I'm going to put a space there. New sentence, so new word. Do you, sweet back, like is a glue bottle word, pigs. So I'm asking a question. So what do I need to put at the end? Period or question mark? Yep, you're right. A question mark. So this is going to be my conclusion. And what do I need to do here, friends? I need to do my illustration. So I would start with, should I draw a picture of me? I could, but I'm going to make sure I have a picture of a pig because my book is about pigs. If you decided to do a book about sheep or cows or chickens or goats, you're going to draw that. So I'm going to think about the head and the body and their feet with the hooves and the curly tail and their ears and the snout. And then I would color it in. And I've got time to color it in with my shading and I can color light or I can color dark. Then I'm going to get my black crayon so I can add. Remember it said that their eyes are small and the snout. And then I'm going to add, oh, I need my brown crayon because their hooves are kind of brownish. And then you can decide, I might make the inside of his ears a little bit darker. And then you can decide if you're going to add other details to this page as well. I think a pig standing all by himself isn't the greatest detail. I would definitely think about how I would fill up the page, and I know you can do it. And there you go, friends. Oop! i got to make sure I come back and finish my cover and get a great picture on there. And then you have written a book. Now, this book took me a whole week to write. You can maybe write one in a few days, or maybe it's going to take a little bit longer. But Tweety Birds, when you're doing...